afternoon was they not even able to get into the 48s. Well, with the exclamation point now put on the Super Sport time attack, Super Sport action is finished for today, and we're going to look ahead now um, to the rest of the day. Um, that's everything that we had this morning. All of the qualifying sessions have already unfolded. It's time to go racing now, Roger. We're going to kick things off first with the Super Hooligans race number one. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to that. You know, a couple new guys in the, the Super Hooligan class, and we've been watching it all weekend and just been surprised with just how close to all the, the lap times are. Uh, Tyler O'Hare definitely defending champ looks really strong this weekend and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that and then also the the Twins Cup race as well last year that race was really good so I'm looking forward to that as well. Yes, and after that, we're going to have the Mission King of the Baggers race number one. And then we're going to wrap things up here at Daytona International Speedway today with the bragging rights for the teams. The top five teams um, entered into the Daytona 200 are all going to get to compete against one another down in victory lane with the coveted Pit Stop Challenge. And, you know, the, there's a lot more to play for this year in the Pit Stop Challenge. The first place, the team gets 7500 bucks. So uh, there's a little bit more on the, on the table this year than just bragging rights. And that's the way the rest of the day is going to unfold. I said it's time to go racing, so let's go downstairs and we're going to start things off with the opening ceremonies. I'll just introduce my Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the World Center of Racing, Daytona International Speedway. Offering today's invocation, please welcome Mark Mercil. Father God, we thank you for the amazing opportunity that we get to be at Daytona Speedway. Thank you for the amazing weather, for taking care of that for us. We want to thank you for every person who helps from the staff here at Daytona to all of our workers from Moto America, to every pit crew person, to every family member that is here to make this event go. And we thank you for them. We thank you, Father, for our corner workers out there. We thank you for, most of all, our racers. We ask God that you'd bless them this afternoon, keep them wise, keep them strong and fast and safe. Thank you for this amazing country that we get to live in, the United States of America. And we thank you, Father, for blessing us with that. Father, we give you this day, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still.
thank you, Mark and Dawn, for performing our national anthem. You can stay there. When we come back, it's time to go racing with race number one of the Super Hooligans. In a fast-paced world, steel buildings have become the backbone of American companies, providing innovation, stability, and versatile solutions for your needs. With flawless products, timely delivery, and budget-friendly options, Steel Commander ensures durable structures for safety, security, and peace of mind. Join our thousands of satisfied customers. Visit our website or call now and bring your vision to life. Welcome to Daytona International Speedway. It's the 83rd annual Speed Weeks here on Motor America Live Plus with coverage coming tomorrow of the Daytona 200. But it is time to go racing here in the Moto America classes. We're going to start things off with the Mission Food Super Hooligans race number one. There are bragging rights, there are points. Anything you can imagine are on the line now. These riders and these teams have been working tirelessly through the off season to be able to get to this point. I'm joined now in the broadcast booth by Roland Sands as well as Roger Hayden. And gentlemen, we've seen the action unfold all weekend. The big news in the off season were all of the manufacturers coming in, Roland. That was all a credit to the hard work that you've been able to put in with your team. Yeah, we got 12 different manufacturers on the grid today. And I don't know if there's another series in the world that has that many manufacturers participating in a motorcycle race. Um, we got electric bikes. We have the ice bikes, obviously. Um, and it's just incredibly exciting to see all these teams out here. And, and to see Indian and Harley battling for the, for the lead in a series that has 12 manufacturers. And Roger, you've mentioned the amount of talent that's come into this series over the last couple of seasons. And you look out at the, the starting grid now, you know, Tyler O'Hare, you've got Troy Herfoss coming over to compete this season, Travis Wyman, Corey West, all of these names that we know, it's gonna be a stout battle. It really, I mean, go all the way down to Nicola Canepa there in eighth, Hayden Schultz is down there in 10th, Hunter Dunham. Dominic Doyle, Stefano Mesa, Andy DeBrino down in 14th. I mean, it's just, he was battling for wins last year, and, and this year just shows you how competitive it is. It looks like we're missing Corey West on the grid. You see him? Mission Super Hooligan National Championship coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. And by Roland Sands Design, built for the ride. Go to rollinsands.com. And as the riders are now making their way around the racetrack on this siding light, let's take a look at the track map. Roger, we talked about the significance of being able to race here at Daytona International Speedway, but it is a unique circuit. Yeah, it's a big track, especially for these guys. They're going to be wide open for a long time, as you see the banking through there down into turn one. Last year through there and, and all the way through the infield, we've seen guys changing positions all the way through the first horseshoe, through the fast kink, and then turn six, I think, is one of the most important uh, corners on this track in this class because that's where the run to the, the chicane starts in through nine and 10 and out of there. Last year, we seen guys lead from the front out of the chicane. We didn't think it was possible. Wide open through the, the, the banking through there. And uh, we always know in this class, the draft is gonna be a huge part on the last lap. All right, as the riders continue to complete this lap, make their way back to pit lane, let's take a look at how they're going to line up. Starting off on row one, we have Tyler O'Hara right behind him, his teammate, Troy Herfoss. And we've seen Corey West there on the second row actually had a problem this morning. And uh, J 
Jake Lewis, their sixth. Most of those guys had some issues this morning, so it'll be interesting if they can make the grid. And in row number three, Hawk Mazzotto, we're going to say that name a lot as this season continues, as well as Nicola Canapa, uh, Nate Kern. Row number four, Hayden Schultz, Hunter Dunham, Dominic Doyle, all riders that we know from other classes all out here hoping to win. And you see Stefano Mesa on the electric bike there, 13th, Danny Debrino, Dylan Wall, all those guys in the top 15. And row number six, Jordan Eubanks, uh, lots of talent joining alongside him as we continue to move back on through the field. Look at Danny Dominguez back there. Uh, it's going to be a great season, Roland. All of these riders, everybody interested in, in the program that you've been able to put together. CJ Cohen, Leo uh, Sowers rounding out the field here today. When you look at that, what sort of sense of pride do you feel? Yeah, it's great to get these guys on the grid. You know, some of these guys have been racing for a very long time, and this is an opportunity for them to get back out on the racetrack. Um, you know, it's turned into a much more competitive series. As we've grown, we're starting to fill out the top riders, and so we're seeing a lot more talent in the series, of course, more manufacturers, and we welcome it all. And all the riders now finding their grid positions. It's like we'll Jake Lewis looking around there. He had an electrical problem this morning. Yeah, not sure if he's having a, a problem out on the grid or not. Take a look at the weather uh, right now. It's 75 degrees, 78 percent humidity. The wind has stayed pretty consistent between 9 and 11 miles an hour. But the temperature is what is changing now. Everybody is in position. It is in the hands of the starter. You're going to look up to your left hand side. The lights are on. The lights are out and it's time to race for 2024. Yeah, we're definitely missing the 13 of Corey West out there. And what a shame because he was on the podium last year um, and almost won but got DQ'd in the first race. Those Harleys got their uh, intake velocity stacks back this year. So we start to see him match up to speed. We'll see how that works out on the banking. And what a start for Jake Lewis there on the second row, starting six, leading, coming out of turn one. Yeah, Pan America started fairly well. These races are a little bit shorter this first lap. Everybody getting up to speed and finding their positions, finding their grooves. Only five laps left to go when when it's so condensed in, in this format. Now it's uh, seven laps to go, it says now on timing and scoring. So when it's condensed in this fashion, though, gentlemen, how do you attack it? You just got to get going early. And you can see, you know, the guys being aggressive. Tyler O'Hare when he passed Jake. And you could see Troy Herfoss. Really aggressive with Jake, knowing how short the race was. They couldn't let Tyler kind of get out there and get a little bit of a lead because it's so short, it'd be hard to, to close that gap. They get opportunity to see these Indians rip up here. And it's it's been talk of the paddock, you know, how are the Harleys going to run against the Indians um, with the changes in the rules and the change in the velocity stack. So Daytona, this is the place where we're going to see it. And, and this year, do y'all have the, uh, the two classes again like previous years? This is just, we took out the air-cooled class this year. We basically gave the air-cooled bikes unlimited um, rules, so they can pretty much do whatever they want. But, you know, the water-cooled bikes, it's tough to its tough to build a bike that's going to compete with these Indians and Pan Americans that are up front right now. Troy Herfoss, um, this is his first time at Daytona. And, I mean, just by evidence of what he's done on Bagger this morning, um, he's no joke. He's certainly been impressive. I've loved the honesty that he has brought to the table as well. And, you know, he is a champion in his own rights, but this is all, these are all new situations for him, and he has not shied away from the fact that he's had to get comfortable. Cody Wyman showing the power of the pans, slot himself in between the two Indian FTR 1200s, and he's uh, he's looking pretty good. He slot himself. That's where you want to be right now, really. Right there, just right in between the, the guys in the front where he's able to stay in that draft. He ran a little bit wide there in that first uh, – Horseshoe there, and if these two guys kind of get the battle in a little bit, that might give Tyler the opportunity to, to maybe try to break that draft. But Troy is just so fast through this infield, especially through that kink and on the breaks into these horseshoes. You see how much he closes the gap. The split times yesterday, um, you know, in the first qualifying session, Tyler was a second faster in the infield than anybody else, but it looks like Troy's picked up the pace. Of course, he's learning every time he gets on this racetrack still, and uh, he's using his experience on the bagger, putting it into the hooligan bike as well. I also loved him saying, you know, Tyler O'Hara has taught me everything that he knows, in quotation, saying for sure he's keeping some of those lessons to himself. He's earned them in his own right, but, but Troy right now is showing that he's learned a few things on his own. Yeah, the Harley's kind of struggling a little bit to stay in the draft, so 
they've definitely gained the horsepower. You can see it there at the end of the straightaway, but or at the end of the banking, coming into the chicane. But um, you there's know, oh, there's Corey. He must have started at the must back. Have started at the back. He's making his way up. Yeah, if he started at the back, he's already moved himself up into the eighth position is what he's showing right now on the timing and scoring um, after completing a, a full lap. So uh, he made quick work of it, whatever it was. Yeah, he's going to be kicking himself because he was right there. Oh, and look at that. And you were right about you know, the Harley really on top end showing it, showing its speed. And Corey Wyman has been able to move into the lead as he made that pass around not only Troy Herfoss, but also Tyler O'Hara, and he's gone red in, in several of the sectors so far. So he's now in, in his groove and he's getting his position. But Troy Herfoss makes quick work of taking it back. Yeah, I was talking to the guys about Troy today, and I was like, man, I, that dude's the dark horse. You know, right now he's he's coming in. We don't we didn't know how he was going to go coming out of Australia. Obviously, he's won some superbike championships in Australia, but man, he's showing his class today. And look what he's doing now. Now that he's got there at the front. Looks like he's got his head down here. And he's got it about a half a second, almost a second lead. You see Tyler sees that too. He's getting a little bit impatient. And unfortunately for Nate Kern on bike number nine, he started the race on the third row. He has now made his way to pit lane, so he is certainly out of any sort of uh, result that he would like to write home about. Yeah, that's unfortunate because Nate was doing really well yesterday. I think he was third in the first practice, and then he had a he had a fall into the chicane yesterday. And you know he's on an air-cooled bike, and he's probably the fastest air-cooled bike that's out here on that BMW. We talked about it during the qualifying sessions, rolling yesterday. Oh, oh shit! And we are now under a red flag condition uh, with heavy debris out on the racetrack. All of these riders will not have to make their way to pit lane, and we'll get a, a look to see which bikes were involved in that incident. And that was one of the one of the things, Roland, that I was going to tee you up for. We have now have a minute to talk about is just balancing all of these bikes and all of the new manufacturers and just the job uh, that's gone into doing that. Well, you know, it's been it's been great. Because we've got the Mission Foods guys supporting this series. They're supporting the class, and it's given us the leeway to say, hey, we're going to have this thing happen in the future. This is a, a series that's going to last for a while. And, you know, um, it's it's a challenge to make everybody happy, I'll tell you that. And we're racing Indians, so, like, I, I'm trying to make sure that oh, we have a good race for the lead, you know, opening it up to the Yamaha MT-09 this year. Um, opening it up to the Triumph Triple as well. There's an MV Agusta that you can run. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to build different motorcycles for this class. And you can just hear them out on the racetrack. You know when a Harley goes by, you know when an Indian goes by. You know when that Yamaha goes by, that thing sounds crazy. So um, it's almost like there's this whole audio thing that I play too in my head to just what they sound like going around the track. Watching all the bikes now pull into their position. You said it's difficult uh, to make sure that everybody's happy. I, I've heard it said before that if everybody's always happy, then you're not doing your job to allow them to push the envelope um, just a little bit. While all of this unfolds, we're going to step away for just a moment, um, let things shake out. We'll see uh, where we stand when we come back, but don't go anywhere. We associate everything to do with motorcycles with the sensations of riding. So the roar of the exhaust, the feeling of pulling in the clutch and shifting, vibration, all of these things are sort of inherent to what we experience as motorcyclists. But these things are actually the limitations of the technology. These things grew up over a hundred year period because that's what the technology allowed us to experience. And now we have electric coming, it's completely different. It's a new sensation, it's much more pure, it's completely different, but it also means you can focus on your ride. And Stefano Mesa has mentioned this many, many times as something that allows him to sort of get into the Zen of riding um, and to actually improve. We are now very pleased of being here with Tatia Cycle Racing and Racing in North America. Um, together with the gasoline vehicles. Uh, you know, after four years of our spec series, it's time to earn the respect of the gasoline industry, <laughs> the gasoline competitors uh, on the tarmac. And we are well aware that um, 
there is a lot of skepticism in uh, the motorcycle world about uh, electric vehicle. They look at electric as an appliance or uh, a kind of soulless bike. And, uh, well, we are here to prove that it's not. And for us, uh, the future is electric, but uh, it does not have to be boring. And this is why we are here. For us, are we're a leathers company based out of Europe. We are the U.S. distributor, and uh, we make all kinds of riding gear, from your Kevlar jeans to cowhide and kangaroo race suits. Some of the things that make our leathers different: we double and triple stitch seams on the inside, so when the riders go down, the seams stay together. We get multiple crashes out of our suits. Also, we come standard with 18 protectors in our suits. We sponsor top riders in Moto America, like Caden Gillum, Corey Ventura, the Vance Hines team. Like, we, we are all over the paddock, and it's because we make a premium race suit, and we make the best race suit in the paddock. All right, this is one of our off-the-rack kangaroo suits. You can see, this suit is not only is it ultralight, I mean, it is perfed all the way around. You can see the perforation went all the way down the back. You see the perf going all the way down the front, all the way through the knees and the legs. So it's fully perforated, so you get great airflow. See here, all our suits, even the kangaroo, come with chest and back protection included, and it's also airbag ready. We believe that every rider should have the opportunity and the ability to get in premium, top of the line leathers at a good cost, no matter where they are, if they're in the paddock as a professional rider, or if they are just doing occasional track day. They should have access to the best leathers on the market, and that's what we do, and that's what we make. We are back at Daytona International Speedway. We are under red flag following an incident that occurred out at turn number six. It is race number one of the Super Hooligans uh, the Mission Super Hooligans Championship has sit down to pit lane and Lorette Nicole. Much with Troy Herfoss and Troy, you had just gotten into that lead full pass and then the, the red flag falls. Is it possible to do that again when we restart? Anything's possible. <laughs> yeah, I hope I can get to the front. I'd like to get out front and see how I can get through the infield and, and see what kind of of gap I need at the finish. I'm just trying to learn as I go, really. But yeah, but mainly I hope, hope these guys are okay. Um, sounds like it was a bad fall at turn one, so all the best to them guys. Hope they're feeling okay. Absolutely. Yeah, we're all uh, crossing our fingers and wishing them the best and that they're okay. And Troy, you have just been put in the boiling water again. Dropped in this Daytona 200 weekend. Everything is happening so fast for you. How are you processing everything? I'm not really. I'll get back to the motel tonight and I'll watch the races back and uh, just try and try and keep learning, really. Um, yeah, I mean, it feels like a race weekend now. It, it, it's um, That challenge race was a, a real real kick for me, so it, yeah, sort of switched on a bit now and um, just got to keep learning. Yeah, got to learn a bit. This track's as difficult as everyone explained it to me, so it's such a tactical nightmare because it's such a long run of the line, so... I just wish I had more years experience, even at 37. <laughs> I think that will come, Troy. I think uh, soon you're going to start feeling a lot more comfortable. And once you get some more time on the bike and with the team, I know you. This is going to be good for you. And Tyler O'Hara right here. Tyler running second, relaxing right now during this red flag. When we get back out for that restart, what are you going to have to do to get out front? I am sorry, I didn't hear you. It's okay. What are you going to have to do to get out front? Yeah, just execute. Execute the plan. Stick to the game plan. And uh, these SNS Cycle FTR Indians are awesome. They're running fast. Just get up front, play the game. Chess, not checkers. So uh, 
Out here having fun, happy to be out here at Daytona Bike Week, Super Hooligans, this is an awesome class, got a lot of different manufacturers, my family's here, and uh, all my supporters, and all these great fans out here, it's just so fun, and it's good to get this first race going, we had a good start to the dash earlier, and uh, you know, Daytona, you just got to lead the last lap. Tyler, best of luck. Jamie, we're going to go back up to you. We have been able to confirm with race control that when we do go back to racing, all these riders will line up in their original grid position. So for Tyler O'Hara, he will resume that pole position uh, and he'll have to just fend off anybody that lines up right behind him. We do know that medical and uh, um, Moto America officials have made their way out onto the racetrack to tend to the riders that were down. We did not get a long enough look to confirm which bikes were involved in this, but looking at the uh, timing and scoring screen that we have here in the booth and, and the indications that we have on it, it does look um, like the two bikes that have not made their way back to pit lane, they're not being scored as, as crossing that beam, um, are the number 62 of Andy Debrino as well as the number 25 of Dominic Doyle. Roger, for you, I know we're sitting here, and Roland, I think you had the most honest reaction of anybody <laughs> um, sitting up here in the booth. Certainly apologies uh, for that. But when you see the incidents unfold, and it's, it, you know, these are friends, these are family members in many cases, um, certainly, you know, thoughts and well wishes go to everybody. But how do you process it? Yeah, um, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure, you know, my kids, Har Scarlett and Hayden, are probably watching this at home right now, and Daddy owes you five bucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, to see people go down here at Daytona, um, especially coming onto the banking, I think that was coming out of turn six. Um, it's a terrifying place to crash a motorcycle. Um, and it's, 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 you don't have a lot of places to go um, if you're trying to avoid somebody. It's, um, you go down in front of other people, it's hard to, it's hard to miss you, you know, especially because the only place you gotta go is right into the freaking tire wall up there. And you know, it's just terrifying. So that's what makes Daytona a scary place to race. And, and also with the, know, with the draft, you know, rolling how you come out of there and you start trying to get right behind that person. And if he makes a little mistake, like you said, you have nowhere to go. All right, let's go back downstairs. We're still under red flag conditions here for the Mission Super Hooligans Challenge. We're going to go back down to Loretta Nicole. Thank you very much. Cody Wyman and I, I don't know if you just saw us talking about his wrist, but you were just coming off of wrist surgery. Are you experiencing any pain? You know, we've we've done the work in the offseason to get to get comfortable and you know this Gator Harley Davidson KWR Pan Am team, you know, we're a little late to the hooligans party. So we're trying to get this uh, this chassis dialed in, but things are ripper on this on the banking. Just gotta get this thing rotated through uh, through the infield. I liked how the start went. It's a bummer to see the red flag come out. Hopefully those riders are okay. But I liked uh, us three being able to get away and have our own little duel for the win. Yeah, absolutely. And the you know the universal motorcycle language is is this in the hands. And I just saw your hand move. Are are you and the bike moving quite a bit on the banking? Bike's moving around a lot. Dunlop came over, make a little tire adjustment. We'll we'll do something with the front end to try to get the bike steering better. I'm I'm just so happy to be racing something. You know, I didn't didn't really have much going on till till late in the off season. Oh, a lot to my brother and to the to the Harley Davidson Motor Company to, to step up and give me something to to show my talents on. So yeah, we're rolling in five minutes. Let's uh, let's get this win. Okay, Cody, thank you very much for your time, Jamie. Well, Lorette, I, we uh, are still under red flag conditions, and while we don't have any replays, don't know that we would have shown them even if we did have any, but we do know um, that, as I mentioned, the medical teams have been out there to tend to the riders that were down, and we did see this um, just a couple moments ago as the ambulance was um, out there trackside, and they did have Andy Debrino, um, who was aboard that number 62, um, the KTM. They had him on the stretcher, and we did see a slight hand movement uh, come from him as they were getting him ready, and gentlemen, that's a good sign. Really good sign, and I mean, just all you think about is, uh, you know, the, the rider safety at that point, all the riders, even when you interview them in the middle of the race, the first thing they're all thinking about is, is the riders that went down, and, uh, you know, Daytona's got a great medical uh, crew, and not only that, Moto America now has really stepped up their, their medical crew in the last couple of years as well, and I know they get on scene really quick, and they'll follow up even from here. You know, to that point, it's something that's so specific to motorcycle racing. You know, you, you look at look out the window here. We're at the World Center of Racing. You think about all of the cars, all of the history that this track holds. A lot of it is in four wheel form, and those are very different incidents than what we see occur on two wheels. And for Moto America to make that investment and step up um, to have their own medical team that travels in week in and week out as a rider, Roger, um, you're a, a past rider yourself, Roland. 
what sense of comfort does that give you every time you get on the bike? Well, I think for me it's just having somebody that understands the sport. You know, a lot of times when you go to the doctor, they don't really understand that it's really like a sport the way it is and kind of get a vague opinion. When you go there, they know how serious it is. This is your livelihood. This is how you pay your bills. This is your career, and they are able to help you out. And uh, and also you build trust. That's the biggest thing is, is building trust with those doctors. And we now have three minutes until pit lane opens. All of these riders will leave pit lane, uh, go back out, get a look at the racetrack. Lorette, you're still down there with a lot of them. And I wanted to get a word with Nate Kern. And Nate, your seat came off. What happened? Yes, ma'am. Just exiting the chicane, I felt something a little loose down low. And I looked, just took a peek, and I saw the seat sideways. So I just got my uh, Orange Theory Fitness thighs into work and uh, squeezed that seat as hard as I could. It's my favorite seat, only one we have that I feel comfortable on, and I just brought it in. Um, and uh, red flag came out. I hope those riders are okay, but it saved us. We got the seat bolted back down so we can get our BMW motor rod card, BMW R9T out front. Now, was the bolt, it came loose or it wasn't bolted in? How did that happen? I really don't know, but I'm glad everybody uh, was able to get the job done so we can get back out here. Yeah, Nate, how do you refocus at this point? Um, I feel better knowing that seat is going to stay in place, so ready to go. Uh, the reset's good, and uh, very thankful after yesterday's unfortunate incident that I'm even to able to race, so thank you. Hey, Nate, thank you very much. Jamie, back up to you. I love that he was able to make light of that situation with those orange theory thighs, as he called them. Uh, but, gentlemen, we, as the, in the list of things that can go wrong, your seat coming off when you're out there in race form, where does that rank? <laughs> it's funny because he talks about how this is his favorite seat, you know, <laughs> which makes me think I mean, he's gone through quite a few iterations of this seat. And if you're uh, familiar with building hooligan bikes or baggers for that matter, the ergonomics of these bikes tends to be a bit of a challenge at times because, you know, they're not specifically built to go around road race tracks. The foot pegs aren't in the right positions. The chassis where the foot pegs bolt together is very wide. Um, it's not like a, a road racer. So in order to make these things have the ground clearance you want, you got to pick the foot pegs up. And then you got to change the seat and then the handlebar position. So just hearing him talk about his special um, relationship with his seat, you know, he wasn't <laughs> letting that thing go. Do you ever experience anything like that, Roger? I don't think I've had a, a, a seat come off before, but I have seen it happen before where, you know, anything – Anything can happen, but I've seen some guys have their, their seat off, and I've actually uh, seen somebody kind of set up, and their seat was loose, so it was moving around, so they just kind of threw it off. Because remember, they used to be, they weren't all one piece back when we, uh, back in the day, it was like two different pieces. So I don't see it often, but every time you think you've seen it all in racing, just wait till the next race. It'll be something you've never seen before. I just come to Daytona. You're yeah. for sure going to see something new every time. Um, I'll tell you who the big winner is in this restart uh, is Corey West. Yes, because we saw him uh, not in his original grid position when we went um, out for racing, and then he was able to move himself back up into eighth. But what we know from race control is that once this race gets restarted, it is going to be four laps in the original grid. So Corey will be able to go out there to his second row start that he originally earned. Everybody leaving pit lane now. I'm gonna come back around the three and a half mile circuit. And there, there is the number nine of Nate oh. Kern. It's the same guy we just talked to whose seat fell off and now he has a flat tire. You can see that where their rim is broke. Oh, he's got a broken rim. Yeah. I wonder how that happened. All right, so before all of these riders make their way around, this is what unfolded the first time we went to racing. Great start by Jake Lewis right there right away, getting a, getting a good start on that, that Saddleman Harley Davidson. You see Tyler O'Hare, great start as well, as he starts to take his toward the front, and then also Troy Hurtfoss, you can see him. He was pretty aggressive early on in this race. The Indians seem to have a little bit of an advantage on the infield. I think both, uh, both Tyler and Troy get through that infield really well. And uh, yeah, Cody's trying to trying to hang. Then the red flag came out here with the accident, getting onto the banking, hoping uh, we're thinking about all the riders, hoping they're okay. Thankful the safety crew was able to, to get there as quick as they did, and uh, you know it's a top-notch uh, facility here, and it's just great to see.
Yeah, now that we know that there were two separate incidents at two different places on the racetrack, uh, the officials all made very quick work of getting everything cleaned up and, and getting this racetrack back into race shape. It always amazes me how quick they can get the air fences back up and back operational. Testament to the crew here at Moto America for, for getting that job done so fast. Oh, well, now know that uh, Jake Lewis, oh, there he is. He is off track. Was it Jake who was looking at his bike earlier? Yeah, and this morning they uh, they had electrical problem, but it looks like something on the the right side of his bike this time. The emotions that you feel in these moments when when you make your way back to pit lane, the crew's able to, to look over the bike again before you get another chance to go out and go racing, and then you're out here on this this siding lap and, and something like this happens. How do you process all of those things? Well, it's just kind of, it's frustrating. You had a problem this morning, but you know, it's just, uh, it's part of that team. You know, you gotta, it, it's part of racing, but it is really frustrating. You kind of do all that work, not just for, for Jake, but also with the team as well. You know, sometimes things happen to the, the bikes that's out of the team's control. And at Daytona, that's where it's really going to show up. Yeah. You know, I mean, every single lap, these bikes want to eat, they want to eat themselves out there on the racetrack. I was saying Daytona is a hungry, it's a hungry bitch. <laughs> hey, that's five more dollars that's for your five kids. Sorry, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, Mike is hot. <laughs> the mic is hot. Um, Red flag being displayed at pit exit. We are getting ready uh, for a restart again. It will be four laps, original grid position. It is just as if none of these uh, previous laps had ever even occurred. This is going to be a four-lap shootout. It's going to go by quick. I mean, you think about it, when you do your first lap, it's already going to be only three laps to go. So you're going to have to be pretty aggressive early on in this race, especially if a guy like Troy Herfoss gets a good start. We've seen what he can do in the infield. You know, it's going to kind of be his plan. But uh, you see Tyler, how he's, see how he's kind of cocked to the right a little bit there on the, on the pole. When you're in the pole there, when you get down to turn one, it kind of gets tight on you. Looking down at the grid, the visors have all been put down. We've got one foot up. It is now in the hands of the starter. Look to the left hand of your screen. The lights went out. The bikes are underway. I think we uh, warm up lap Oh, this here. is the warm up lap. OK. See how the, the track is right there in the background? You see why Tyler was lined up on pole position, face to the, the right a little bit. Because when you get that straight shot from pole where pit exit is, you have to move over to the right just a little bit. And we've seen. Uh, some other guys like have to like break and not realize it and everybody just came by him on the outside. So pretty pretty heads up riding from Tyler. He's a he's a he's a crafty old dirt tracker, man. They figure oh, yeah. out all those little secrets. Well, you know, Tyler always talks about this racetrack. It only matters if you lead across the stripe. And I've seen Ty Tyler play it right quite a few times at Daytona. Uh, beat us last year out here with him. Yep. You know, Bobby Bobby came around and uh, leading it coming out of the out of the uh, chicane, and Tyler just blew right by him at the stripe. And he's got away, man. I think he he's got the magical touch that it takes to win races at Daytona. We're gonna go back and take a look at the original grid. Uh, we mentioned everybody gets to line up in their spots. This is where they'll be. Tyler O'Hara, our pole sitter, uh, leading off row one with his teammate Troy Herfoss right alongside him. Travis Wyman completing that front row. Uh, looking back to row three, Hawk Mazota, uh, Nicola Canape, and Nate Kern making up that third row. Hayden Schultz, uh, Hunter Dunham, and Dominic Doyle. Now, Dominic Doyle will not be out there. Uh, this was the original grid position. Stefano Mesa, great to see him out there this season. Um, as well as Dylan Wall um, on row number five. AJ Peasley, Jeff Lane, Cole King, right out of flat track racing, Andrew Berkeley, Dan Danny Dominique with the wonderful cowboy hat, and Mitchell Stein, 24th, Paul Cannell, Joseph Katzberg, CJ Cohen, and Leo Sowers rounded out. Oh. He had a, a different version of the cowboy hat you wore yeah. coming into the booth, yeah, Roland. I'm kind of jealous. I couldn't wear the cow. If you notice, my hair's a little messed up. But <laughs> I couldn't wear the cowboy hat with the headphones. But You could put it on on top. It's not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> it's not oh. a good look. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> that's cowboy hat hair. All right, let's go back to the racetrack. We don't need to look in here any longer. All the riders making it down. Now it's going to be time to restart this race. My apologies for that. All of the riders going to find their grid positions down on pit lane. And if you weren't with us this morning when we explained all of races this weekend will be started from pit lane. You take a look at Daytona International Speedway. You think about the banking, the degree of elevation that it offers. There is no way to do a standing start up on the, the high banks, Roger. And also for the crew. You know, it's the last time they came around, there was a crew in their grid spot. You know, then they had to walk across the, the Supercross track there. And just with the banking, you couldn't touch, especially uh, somebody short like me. I'd have a lot of trouble. <laughs> it wouldn't be a fun place to start, no. I'll tell you that. Leaned over. Oh, my God. That thing would just spin up and go <laughs> sideways coming off the banking. Not fun. There's Corey West in his original position. You said it, Roland. He, he gets the best shot at this, having not been there well, uh, looks the like we had time. it with Travis as well, so we had both guys. All right, starter, here we go. We're going to put the lights up in the corner, hopefully. Lights are out. Now it's time to go racing. The second attempt at the first race of the Super Hooligans here at Daytona International Speedway. It is a four-lap shootout. We may see a different race now that we have both Corey West and Travis Wyman. It looks like both of them missed their grid spot in the first race, and now we're seeing the results. They're both out in front. Yeah, look at Troy early on, trying to look up the inside there. Boy, it gets tight there at that, that first horseshoe in the middle. I love that corner. Yeah. That's one of my favorite corners in road racing. You just feel like a hero getting in there super hot. Tyler O'Hare did not get a very good start that time, kind of fading back down no, to, to fifth. and. Looks like Hayden Schultz is going to try to make a move on him. It wasn't close enough. We're going to see as we come out on the turn six onto the banking. Now we've got a stack of bikes. We got all the all the leaders up front, and we're going to see how it, how it plays out with our horsepower game. Yes, Tyler O'Hara had a much better start from the pole position the first time around. When you don't get the start that you want, and you only have four laps to make it up. How do you compensate? You just got to get going and be aggressive. If there's a door, you got to take it. If somebody leaves in one little spot, and also if somebody's going to come by you, you cannot get that spot up because it's going to go so fast with this draft. And also, you do not want to get shuffled toward the back of the lead group if it is a really big pack. Your one thing about this track, though, you got four laps. And if he can build the momentum from back there in fifth place, which is completely possible, I mean, oh! Nicola. Is that the Yamaha? Uh-huh. Yep. Man, he had a great start, too. It was kind of right on the back of that uh, that lead group. I was interested to see what the MT-09 was going to stack up to the Indians and the Harleys. And he was up, and he walked away under his own power. Uh, so that was good for him. As we now look up front, that is the number 10 of Travis Wyman. Here's a replay. You see in the back of your picture. He had oh, help. Oh, yeah. That was nasty. He, oh, he ran off and then got into somebody there. That was Hayden nasty. Schultz. Got ran off the track. Just glad to see him up and okay. It's like Hayden may have chopped the throttle a little bit there and got underneath him. And quite a scrap for the lead right now. Yeah, well, we were watching this. Uh, that number 13 of Corey West, he was able to get around Travis Wyman and, and take the lead of this race. What a different look from the first start. You know, I mean, obviously, those guys having to start from the back, they weren't able to show their cars, but now they are. Corey West, last year's almost winner after he got DQ'd, is leading this thing, and I know he wants to win this thing more than anything else. When you're referred to as an almost winner, does that make you win it more the next time out? At 100%. I agree completely. Yeah. Da it's Daytona. It's like you want to win a race here so bad. Troy Herfoss now moved into that second position. Roland, I loved your reaction yesterday when you were standing on pit lane. You put your hands up and you're like, can you believe that we're here racing at Daytona? You're like, what? <laughs> oh, man. That, the Harleys are, they're kind of ripping. I was going to say, Troy, Troy was not able to pull oh. out of the draft and get by Corey. Over the next three laps, how important is that going to be for him to figure out? I think he knows. I think he probably can kind of feel his strategy. He's third right now. He's behind those two guys, and he's going to know for sure when they get to the stripe if he's able to, to pull out and make the pass. This is his opportunity right here, but, man, you could see uh, 
Is that Tyler? You can see that Cody. Teammate? Cody came back by him, but Troy's making the best of it going into one. But the five in this lead pack what is certainly scrap. not leaving room for error. <laughs> no. you see Troy here taking the lead in turn one. I think he knows what he needs to do. He needs to lead out of here and put a really good first sector in, which is the whole infield, and see if he can break the, the draft for these guys. And you can see he's got his head down. Yeah, he's going to want to put try and put a gap on him on this infield section on the, in the first sector and see if he can pull that gap coming out of turn six. But you know how it is here. You think you got the gap? <laughs> and then as you're coming in the chicane, someone comes blowing by you. He's doing the job yeah. right now. now. Now he's building up a pretty good gap on the rest of the pack that's behind him. Now these guys, they need to make sure they don't start going back and forth and stay in line and kind of work together in that draft so they can close that gap back down. When they come around the, you know, the strike this time, it's only going to be one lap to go. And that last lap by Troy Herfa. Herfoss had the quickest lap of the race. It was a 155.3. Um, so super impressive, the speed that they've been able to find in these race conditions as well. Yeah, I'm surprised they've fallen off a bit from uh, their qualifying pace. They were down, I think, in the 53s in qualifying. Um, I think they're probably running the super, the soft tire as well, so they run a little bit harder tire in the main. But Troy proven that he gets through the infield well. He can lead these guys going in the chicane. We'll see if the same thing Oh, looks he, true coming out. <laughs> he got him loose there. Yeah, he got a little wide there. That hurt his, his drive out of the, the chicane there. You're going to see Travis Wyman is going to be able to close that up, especially right when they get to the line. I think Travis is going to be there. Who's in the best spot right now? Could it be Tyler O'Hara, who's got the two riders right in front of him? I think there are two guys in the lead. It's between Troy and uh, Travis right now. Yeah, I, I'm surprised they've got these guys that are behind them. Um, they were pretty close coming coming through the infield. I don't know if something happened to to Cody, um, who was leading that group, or to Corey, who was leading that group on the infield. Oh, oh when no. they came across start finish, this is the final lap of the race. You see the hand up Travis. for Travis Wyman as he now has to pull out of the way. And we saw, now have four riders uh, leading this lead pack with Troy Herfoss right in the front of all of them. And Troy makes a little mistake in that first horseshoe getting in deep almost yeah. off the track. He has no idea that Travis uh, made that mistake. He does know that he felt him the lap before, you know, on, on the banking. You can feel somebody when they're on the outside of you going across the trial. Tyler taking advantage of uh, some of that, that drama there and actually slot himself up into second place. And we're looking at an Indian 1-2 here if Corey can't make his way back by him. It's unfortunate that Travis Wyman uh, had to pull to the side and get out of that action. So we do see, looks like a piece of debris that is on the racetrack. We are on the final lap, but that number plate was right there uh, in the middle of the, the race surface. And as we now watch Troy Herfoss, he has said he needed to get comfortable. He had said he was out of his comfort zone coming here to Daytona. So many lessons that he had to learn, so many things he had to get comfortable with as he now comes through the chicane on this final lap of the first race of the season. He said he was here to compete. He wanted to, the fans to know that he was here to have a good time, but he is here to be a fierce competitor. He's a nice guy. He's somebody that you want to root for, and he is on his way to the checkered flag in the first race of the 2024 season. And this is what he came here for, come here this and, and win, and, and he's proven it so far, and a great ride by Troy and that team. And with his head down as he comes across the start-finish line, Troy Herfoss will win the first race of the Mission Super Hooligans Championship in the 2024 season, his first attempt at it. And you can just see the relief. He dropped his shoulders, took a big sigh, and he's done it, you guys. I mean, what, a, what an accomplishment to win your first race over here. First American road race, first high bar race, first race of the season, really. Um, man, congratulations to Troy and an Indian 1-2 here. Um, after looking at these Harleys who were running really well with the FTRs early on, the Indians showed their strength at the end of the race. Yeah, the, the Indians through the infield just seemed like they handled a little bit better. Not the Harley definitely a little bit on top and even over the lap. Now, when, uh, well, they're celebrating and, and we had the Indian 1-2 finish, this was coming um, towards the white flag. This is a replay. Oh, that was the number 49. That was Hayden Schultz. Oh, that is, 
That's a little stroke of luck right there, because that's right. not where you want to go down. Oh, Hawk Mazzotto has got his number place tweaked. Yeah, maybe he was involved in that incident. Hawk Mazzotto finishing fifth place with a wonky number plate. That's Hawk's best finish, isn't it? It's a great yeah. result for him. I'm pretty pumped on him. That's that's our bike out there. So uh, he's on a Trackhouse sponsored Indian FTR 1200. Um, Trackhouse, of course, is sponsoring MotoGP this year in the Aprilia, and they're also sponsoring Hawk on one of our bikes as well. So it's great to have Trackhouse as a sponsor and a sponsor for Super Hooligan. Yeah, we told that story this morning during the qualifying session. It's great that it was that friendship uh, between Hawk and, and Justin Marks that really put all of that together. But what a, what a great start to the season. Mission Super Hooligan National Championship coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. And by Roland Sands Design, built for the ride. Go to RolandSands.com. And now you see the corner workers out. Looks, I don't know if they're trying to get the wave started, if they're enjoying the breeze, but it looks like they are definitely having a good time as Troy Herfoss is making his way around. I want to say thank you to Roland Sands, who has now left the broadcast booth. He is making his way down to Victory Lane just below us so that he can celebrate with everybody. As he takes a lot of pride. You can see it on his face when he talks about it, uh, the series that he envisioned and brought out to the Moto America paddock and just the level of competition, Roger, that, that has increased from here. Um, it's just really, really great things. But what about this guy? Yeah, just come here and, you know, watching the race, we were thinking about his plan and, and how smart he was already known right away. I need to lead through the lead through the infield. And, uh, you know, it's got to feel pretty good. Yesterday he talked about how this place was a little daunting with the, with the walls and the banking. And uh, I think today he's got it figured out. No, I think he certainly figured it out. Hopefully this gives him some more confidence as he gets ready uh, for the Mission King of the Baggers race uh, that will be later on this afternoon. Let's get to, uh, let's take a look at the full results um, in just a moment as, as he continues to make his way to victory lane. We'll talk to him as well uh, in just a moment. But Tyler O'Hara, he was able to recover from that bad start and put it on the second step of the podium. Yeah, and for Tyler, just kind of lost some spots early on. But also Corey West, great ride by him. And Cody Wyman, it was good to see the Harleys up there. We talked about Hawk Mazzotta there. His best finish, uh, fifth. Tyler Duffy, six. Hunter Dunham coming back racing this year on the Ducati. And uh, Jordan Eubanks and Dylan Wall rounding out the top nine. A lot of good stories that we will now get to tell for the rest of the season as, as we consider the fact that this is just the first of many races. We have another a race tomorrow as well. So their weekend is not over yet. A lot of lessons have been learned. Look at that celebration. <laughs> happening down there in victory lane it's cool roger if you look out the window right below our table here you can see all of <laughs> this unfolding we have a really really great seat here at daytona international speedway let's let's go ahead we're going to throw it down to lorette nicole she's down there in all of the action lorette i am and troy herfoss shaking uh, all the hands down here troy congratulations you have done it you have taken the first race win Man, I'm still chasing you. You're still walking around. Congratulations. It must be a sigh of relief at this point. Uh, so, such a sigh of relief. I was like, I, my only option is to get away in the infield, I thought, just because of the inexperience I've got. And I didn't think it would work. Um, there must have been a hell of a race going on behind me because every time I was coming around the bank, I was just squeezing everything I could together. I'm a, I'm a tall guy. And I must admit, I've skipped a fair few yoga, yoga classes in my time. so. Yeah, it was just, it felt like that last half a lap around the banking took four hours. I was just waiting for everyone to come past me, but hey, hats off to the team. Indian Motorcycles 1-2, and we're on a really good weekend this weekend, and um, we just hope we can keep up the good work, and, and all the hard work's paying, paying off. I feel lucky that I'm, I'm stepping into this team, and I've got two really well-prepared race bikes, and um, hopefully all the bad luck from last year at Daytona is behind us, and we'll send it into tomorrow as good as we can. Congratulations to Troy Herfoss. Jamie. Yes, congratulations indeed, Roger. It was a short race, but there was plenty of action. Yeah, it was a short race, but it was a really exciting race. See, uh, right off the start there, you see uh, Corey West around the outside making a, uh, this was the, the first start there with, with Jake Lewis getting a really good start there. And you can see the Indians here early on. 
Troy Herfoss and Tyler O'Hara, Cody Wyman was there early on in the race, and you can just see kind of these top three were kind of pulling away early on in this race. See Cody Wyman making a lot of a lot of passes there as they went on, but then we had that accident. Getting on to the uh, banking there out of turn six, and this was the second start here. Another good start by the Saddleman boys, Cody, uh, Travis Wyman, and also Corey West. But you can see Troy Herfoss there on the number 17 just being aggressive early. Yes, and when we saw that red flag, I certainly want to send our, our best wishes to uh, Andy Debrino and Dominic Doyle. This action continued to unfold. You see Troy Herfoss leading the way. Unfortunately, Travis Wyman, who's behind him right now, he was never going to make it to the checkered flag, Roger. Yeah, and Travis kind of closes the gap down, and then he has this issue coming out of turn one. You see there, headed on the last lap, was in a good spot to maybe be able to make the draft pass, but Troy was able to do what he needed to do. Squeezed in and then out of it, as he said. You see the team there celebrating and uh, wins his first race. And he got to celebrate on the racetrack with his teammate, Tyler O'Hara. We'll be back for more after this.